Okay guys, so I may have just found the most powerful build in all of Dead Cells. At least in this version of the game. So today, I'm going to showcase one of the newest mutations introduced in the latest patch, known as Barbed Tips. And to my surprise, it is just beyond busted, as you'll see later on. So this is going to be my attempt at building the most powerful build in Dead Cells. And as always, I'm going to be doing all of this in normal mode, so you'll see exactly how I came across the build. Um, this is something that I just accidentally stumbled upon while I was testing in the beta version of the patch. So hopefully you'll enjoy, and if anyone is new here, I post Dead Cells content in the form of guides as well as 5 BC gameplay runs just like this one. If that sounds interesting, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out, and you can always just unsubscribe anytime. So without further ado, let's get into the run. So first of all, I'm just starting off in the prisoner's quarters, just grabbing some useful items. Not really too much to say, I wasn't sure if I was actually able to get the build going at this time. But I just wanted to see how far I can go with it. And obviously, the weapons that I have in the beginning of the game right now, the quick bow is not very good, as you would likely guess. But I'm going to get into the second biome and pick up Barb Tips as one of my as the first mutation, and it'll start to do some work for me because it actually counts as DLT damage, where even if you're not attacking the enemy, it still takes down their health, even if it's very slowly. And yes, this build isn't that powerful in the beginning, but like I mean no build is like that, and I think it really shows the essence of normal mode, where you basically start off with nothing, and then you have to find the best synergies for yourself, and finally stick with it. However, I have learned my lesson guys. So in my broadsword video, I realized that I didn't have the broadsword until like 17 minutes into the video, so as a result, I'm just going to show the parts where I get the stuff to make my build work, but other than that, I'm going to skip ahead to the parts where I don't have the build. So most of the video will be about where I actually get the build going. And just going into the prison deaths, um, not too much to say about it here. Um, the quick bow is still kind of weak. That's why I picked up No Mercy. I think it can really help you out, especially in the early game, if you find that your build is struggling a bit. Now, of course, for those that are unfamiliar, No Mercy executes any enemies that are below 15% health. But to my surprise, the DLT damage from Barb Tips actually counts towards the execution range. If you fire a bunch of arrows into an enemy and you let its health tick down, once it gets to 50%, it just gets automatically executed because of Barb Tips. So that's a very, very cool interaction. I did a really cool parry there. I don't know if you saw that. But I am going to have to replace the ice shield sometime in the future. Going to reroll the shops. I am. I think I roll into one of the items that, I, that were needed for the build. Of course, I just took some stupid hits from the slasher. That always happens. So I pick up the throwing knife and I'm going to dual bind it in the options menu. If you're unfamiliar what dual binding is, I have a video for it where it explains what it is and how you can do it as well. But basically, I dual bind the throwing knife with the quick book. And of course, I just took some stupid damage there as well. Um, I, I mean, it happens. I make mistakes too. But I'm going to get into a challenge rift so I can get an extra stroll stat. But anyways, I have the throwing knife as well as the quick bow in my inventory right now. Um, I felt a bit stingy about it, but I decided to just heal up. I didn't want to risk anything, though this is still pretty early in the game right now. So I really didn't feel very good about using a health pot. And that rampager was just moon dancing across the platform there. But you see how the throwing knife as well as the quick bow, once dual binded, it actually increases DPS by a lot. And as usual, I'm just going to go into the challenge rift and speed up this part of the process. I mean, let's be honest, no one wants to see this, but I wanted to show me actually going through it to, to prove to you guys that I've actually done it myself, so. But honestly, once it's sped up, it shouldn't really take a long time. Anyways, back into, back about the patch, the new patch, I have a bunch more content planned out just to showcase some of the newest weapons. Though so far, I, I can't really say I'm too impressed by the new melee weapons. I mean, the general consensus on the Discord server, the Dead Cells official Discord server, is that they're just pretty mediocre, and I think I would agree. Um, I thought like a lot of the weapons, especially the Tombstone, might be experimental to introduce newer archetypes in the future. I just wish there was more like mutations that were that kind of supported the slow style of gameplay. But anyways, I'll let you guys be the judge of that once I release those videos in the coming weeks. But don't be too surprised if no videos come out for at least a week because things have been pretty busy for me right now. And I just picked up the multiple Nox bow. If you're wondering why I pick up the multiple Nox bow and not the quick bow, it's because the bar of tips does DPS per arrow stuck into an enemy. So because the multiple Nox bow fires three arrows at a time, it's able to stick three arrows into enemies consistently. 
And on top of that, the multiple knockspell has really nice breach power. So you can actually stun enemies with the multiple knocks, which is not something that you see very often in ranged weapons. I mean, if you look at it, a lot of the ranged weapons are, are very fast, and yeah, I just realized I missed the challenge rift there. Anyways, a lot of the ranged weapons are really fast, and they don't have a lot of breach. Of course, breach power refers to being able to stun enemies, if you don't know what that is. I mean, it makes sense that ranged builds don't really have that luxury of breach because, you know, you're firing from a distance, you're, you're not gonna have that kind of power. But yeah, since the build is not fully complete yet, I'm just gonna kind of skim forward and go into the later stages of the game just to show you guys the absolute powerhouse that is this build. So I'm going to go into the Conjunctivious fight. This really shouldn't take too long. I mean, you'll see how the barb tips is able to just do so much damage to the boss in like a really short time. Because all I have to do right now is just stick a bunch of arrows into Conjunctivious. And as you can see, her health just gets ticked down just like that. And I'm going to get into the first tentacle phase. And just like with the boss phase itself, the tentacles are really not really a challenge since you can just fire once and then let the DLT take care of the rest. That being said, if you don't want to see all of the video, you can always just skip ahead. I mean, that's what the chapters are for. I mean, if you just wanted to watch 10 minutes of the video, that's fine. If you just wanted to see me melt through all the bosses, that's fine too. But anyways, getting into the second tentacle phase, at this point, this was really just an automatic fight. I mean, I haven't lost a single point of health yet, and that's to be expected because this is just so powerful. And I mean, I'm sure other people in the community has thought of this obviously, but I'm really just trying to show you guys in a 5BC setting of how powerful this is. Again, all I have to do is just stick a bunch of arrows into Conjunctivious. And there we go, the, the boss is dead because it just got executed by No Mercy. Now for those that don't know, No Mercy executes any enemies that fall under 15% health. Of course that would be a little bit too OP for bosses, that's why in the beta version they toned it down. So that bosses only get executed when it's at like 7.5%, so basically half of 15%. But anyways, I'm just kind of melting through the biomes right now. Um, I picked up Parting Gift, though you will see if I could get Hulkuda's bow in the backpack and pick up Acrobata pack, then it would be like cherry on top, and this will just be very, very overpowered. But anyways, even without Hulkuda's bow, I'm able to do so much damage because of Parting Gift, which, I mean, is the best mutation in the game right now. On top of Barb Tips, as well as No Mercy, I mean, I think in the later stages of the game, it is actually better to switch out No Mercy for something else, because let's be honest, you're doing so much damage with this build already, that you can really just do anything else with it. I mean, No Mercy is pretty helpful, but at the later stages of the game, it's really not that impactful because a lot of the builds, especially if you look at builds like Magic Missiles, um, a lot of it is weak in the early game, but once you get later, it can get pretty powerful. And by that point, No Mercy is like not very, it's not very noticeable anymore, honestly. I do have the piercing shots on the multiple knocks, but that's why it's able to do so much damage to like, enemies that are even behind the enemies that I'm targeting, but because of the breach power, because of the high DPS potential, it's just able to melt through absolutely everything. I'm going to find the curse chest, I'm just going to take it right away. I mean, what can possibly go wrong at this point? Again, I usually like to speed up the footage of me just trying to get to enemies, where the fights are actually interesting. Overall, I'm pretty excited about this new patch. I think there are a lot of build potentials that can be had with the new systems, at least with the new weapons. So I am going to have to try out every single one of them and let you guys know what I think. So already I'm able to lift the curse. That was a very, very easy curse. And just like that, I'm going to get Hakuda's bow inside the backpack. And in the next transition area, I'm going to pick up Acrobata Pack to really make use of bar tips. Now for those that don't know, how Hakuda's bow works is that it amplifies every single instance of damage that you inflict on enemies. Because DLT builds have large amount of small instances of damage, every single instance of those ticks, those damage ticks, will get amplified by Hokuto's bow. If we are to assume that's how it works, then theoretically every single arrow that gets stuck on the enemy will get its damage amplified by Hokuto's bow. That's the reason I try to get it uh, when I was testing the build, but finally in this normal mode run, I'm finally able to actually pull it off. So I was just really really surprised on how much damage it's able to do. I picked up Wave of Denial, 
because it created... I thought it was the most offensive skill in tactics, at least one of the most offensive skills. I mean, because we're already doing so much damage, it would make sense to kind of give ourselves a little breathing room and then just use the bows to finish off the enemies. I mean, why would we be dodging when we could be attacking? And I think Wave of Denial is the best skill in this build to do that. And I think for the last skill, you can really use whatever you want. Again, I'm trying to create flexibility so you guys can kind of experiment yourself. I mean, this is not like objectively the best build in the game. I mean, there will always be room for experiment, so I'm just providing you guys with the baseline of what this build should look like. As for the mutations, I picked up Barb Tips, Acrobata Pack, of course, and I picked up Disengagement, but I think for the last mutation slot, you can really pick whichever one you want. If you're very, very confident in your gameplay, you don't think you're gonna get hit, then you can just pick up another offensive mutation such as Parting Gift, or if you're very skill-oriented, you can always pick up Hunter Instinct, but for me, I'm not a very good player. Um, I wanted to. I wanted that little extra bit of insurance. That's why I picked up this engagement in case something went terribly wrong, so I can actually recover from it. This is the playstyle that I like to do. I like to take risks, but not like too many risks. Now, of course, because this is tactics, um, there isn't a lot of margin for error. So this build, while it's very very powerful, does need some degree of knowledge to pilot. I mean, you can't really take a lot of damage. If you take like three instances of damage at a single time, then you're pretty much just dead. So really got to be careful. Always play really aggressively, but really know your limits as well. So as you can see, I'm really just melting through cavern right now. And you'll see later in the bosses section, I'm able to just melt through those as well. That being said though, this build was just really something that I stumbled upon on accident. I mean, a lot of people experimented with barbed chips you know, theorizing that it can possibly work with things such as, like, Sonic Carbine. I tried it out. I mean, Sonic Carbine is definitely better with barbed tips, but let's be honest, Sonic Carbine is just not a very good weapon, and I really don't see any reason of using it if this build exists. I mean, at this point, I wasn't even sure if the throwing knife counted as a arrow stuck in the enemies, but I was willing to give it a try, and dual binding tactics builds are always very, very powerful. Oh, and also I'm experimenting with a shorter video format, so normally I have my videos around 27 to 28 minutes, but this time around I'm just going to have it just over 20 minutes. So let me know what you guys think of that. I mean, I didn't want my videos to be like Ubisoft games where only like 4 hours of the game is good, and then the other 12 hours are just filler missions that really just try to prolong how much you play the game. I wanted it to be just like 20 minutes of pure highlights. Everything is like the best as it can be, and I only show the interesting parts. So let me know what you guys think of this new format. Also, in my 2.1 tier list, I did rate both Throwing Knife as well as multiple Nox Boat to be S tier items, as you'll definitely get to see why that is the case when we get to the bosses. But overall, in the caverns, I'm doing pretty well right now. I mean, I have over 100 kills without getting hit, so I'm just going to upgrade the Throwing Knife from an 8th tier all the way to the 12th tier, which is the highest possible in the game. And I'm going to get into the giant boss fight, and I'm going to time this boss fight and let you guys know just how fast this went. So just like that, giant gets down to half health, and he's dead, so <laughs> that fight literally took like under 20 seconds. I'm going to skip high peak castle and go straight into the hand of the king fight. Now, I don't know if you guys have been on Reddit recently, but I did post a clip of the giant fight onto Reddit. Just to let you guys know, that was actually me. Um, I Don't ask me why my Reddit name is different than my YouTube name, but I knocked away the bombs with the Wave of Denial, and then I wasn't expecting that attack to come out, because I thought I have knocked away all of the bombs, and I didn't realize that there was still like a couple left. So unfortunately, lost no hit took damage to a stupid mistake, but fortunately, I didn't take any more instances of damage in this fight. I mean, as you can see, Hand of the King does one more attack and he's down as well. And I did manage to get a lot of rally points back, so I was really, really thankful for that. But yeah, there was the fight. I'm going to get into the Astrolab and continue on with the final portion of the game. I mean, this build is just taking no prisoners right now. I mean, I did pick up Tesla Coil. I mean, let's be honest, if we're playing the most powerful build in the game right now, we gotta pair it up with the best skills in the game, of course. At this point, I really had to play a bit more cautiously, though I haven't expended a single health flask, so that's probably a very good sign. 
and I would say always find the reason to skip High Peak Castle if you can find it. Um, at this point, I don't really have too much to say about this biome. I mean, as you can see that Librarian got knocked out of the air by Wave of Denial. I didn't think it was able to do that. I thought it just kind of knocked it around and it wouldn't do any damage just like it did with the bombers. But fortunately, it looks like the Librarians follow a particular trajectory where it just moves in a horizontal line. And if it gets moved anywhere past that trajectory, then it just gets damaged. So I'm going to fight the first failed experiment elite, easily get the elevator key, and it won't be too long until I get the next. Just cheesing the Librarian's attacks, I mean that's one of the few ways you can actually cheese their attacks in this game. Just run into a wall, really easy. And as always, every time I come to the Astrolab, of course, the protectors are giving me the headache. You just gotta take them out first. Uh, they don't have a lot of health, but they are just very annoying to deal with. I mean, Promenade is already my least favorite biome in the game because I have to deal with the protectors. But here, it's kind of... it's even worse because sometimes they just hide behind the invincible monster. And you have to literally dodge into them to even get to the protector. But other than that, I don't really have too much to say about the Astrolab. Everything's going really well right now. I haven't taken hit, and Hokuto's bow is doing a lot of work. Now, I thought the giant fight would have gone even faster had I landed the Hokuto's bow shot onto the eyeball because I got it onto the fist, but because there is a cooldown of how many times Acrobata Pack can be used in between instances where I think it's like every three seconds it refreshes and you can fire another shot from your backpack. I thought if I could actually land the hit on the eyeball, it probably would have done even more damage than before. I mean, that was my least, that was my giant fight with the least amount of time taken. I have never done that with any other build in the game so far, and I really hope that they don't nerf barb tips. I mean, come on, this will just be our little secret, don't tell the devs about this. This build is fine as it is. Though I think one of the few ways you can actually kind of nerf barb tips is to just make it so that when the arrows are stuck in the enemy, they take like one big instance of damage as opposed to one instance each per arrow stuck onto the enemy. So I think in that case, you can't really take advantage of Hakuda's bow, which makes sense because it's just way too overpowered right now. And if you guys find an even stronger build than this, definitely let me know. I mean, that's what we're trying to do here, is to try to break the game. So I'm going to get into the elite slammer fight, the but really just do the cheese, it's not really a problem. And finally, I'm going to go into the observatory and fight the final boss. And this boss, this boss fight, will actually be the shortest I have ever gotten in all of my runs. But first of all, I'm going to show the final setup that I had. I've been getting some requests to do this, basically just show my inventory before the final boss fight, to let you guys know what kind of equipment I had at this point of the game. But finally, again, I'm going to time this boss fight as well, because you guys will absolutely be astonished of how short this fight was. So anyways, Collector's gonna do his little monologue thing, we're going to start the fight. So just gonna hammer uh, Collector with the multiple knocks bow, and because of the DLT damage from Barb Tips, as well as the amplified damage from Hokuda's bow, I'm just able to get the first heal right away. Collector's gonna do his thing, and because of Barb Tips, it's able- He's taking damage before I even do anything, so there was the second heal right there. I thought I could get the third heal just in time, but unfortunate, but I'm going to get into the enemy room, kill the enemies, and here, Kukter is going to do his third heal, but he's going to drop the potion on the third heal. I mean, this build is so busted that Collector doesn't even get to heal. And just like that, one more ground slam attack is going to do it. There was the fight. That fight was under one minute, which was the fastest I have ever gotten in the Collector boss fight. I'm not sure what causes Barb Tips to do that on the Collector's third heal. I mean, if you really look at it, I basically skipped like a quarter of this fight, and I wonder if that can be used for speedruns. But anyways, there was the run, the most powerful build in all of Dead Cells. I mean, if it weren't for that one little mistake in the Hand of the King fight, I would have gotten the no-hit on all four bosses. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this build work. I'm going to do some experiments with the slow melee weapons, and I'm going to post updates on those, so stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching, guys.